Hi everyone. Happy Scala Free Party. Thank you, Sphere.it, for organizing this amazing event and inviting me to speak. So let's start. My name is Daniela, and I'm going to talk to you about my top five cool things about Scala Free that are not enums. And the reason why I don't want to talk to you about enums is because, of course, enums are the coolest thing ever. But I assume somebody else has already mentioned. So let's talk about something else. But first, a few things about me. Um, I'm a software engineer living in London, and I've always been fairly active in the Scala community. I absolutely love Scala. I've been at conferences, I maintain open source projects, and um, I've also written a book, uh, which is gonna be soon um, published by Manning, uh, which is titled Get Programming with Scala, which is a uh, practical exercise driven introduction to Scala and a tiny little bit of functional programming. Um, the book has been uh, migrated to Scala free. So if that sounds interesting to you, check it out. That's a discount code for you as well. But enough about me, let's talk about Scala free and let's start with my number five favorite feature of Scala free that are not enums. And my number five is that uh, Scala Free has overall an improved type inference. And this really does make an impact, in particular if, you, if Scala is not the language that you use every day. Let me, um, let me uh, show you what I mean with an example. So um, you have a snippet of code, um, such as the one that you are seeing on the screen, you have a map. Uh, that has uh, an entry, uh, Scala free, and you are iterating through all the entries of your map and you combine the two um, key and value to produce a string. And this code makes perfect sense. But unfortunately, uh, when you type it into the um, Scala to compiler, the Scala compiler is struggling to understand what you mean. He's even claiming that there is a missing parameter type and refuses to compile this snippet of code. And the reason why this is happening is because the Scala compiler, in particular the Scala 2 compiler, is not perfect. He's not able to fully understand uh, what we mean. So um, he's not able uh, to, um, to detect that it should decompose uh, the tuple um, that we, um, we are using. And um, the error message is um, somehow useful. Um, it does explain uh, what the uh, Scala compiler um, expects from us. And then it says, consider a pattern matching anonymous function. And then it suggests maybe you should put a case keyword, which is great, but um, maybe you are new to the Scala language, you don't know what that case keyword is. Maybe you are not familiar with functional programming, so an anonymous function means nothing to you. Um, so uh, this can be a uh, tricky to figure out for somebody that maybe is not completely familiar with the language. Uh, and of course, as we mentioned before, uh, you just add um, a case keyword and everything is happy again. The compiler is able to fully understand what you mean and you can move on. But what happens now with Scala Free? Well, all of this is gone. The Scala Free compiler is a lot more powerful. It has a lot more powerful type inference. So it's fully able to understand the, um, what you mean with that expression. So we got used to a lot of uh, little tricks that um, we use to help the Scala compiler understand what we mean. But because the Scala free compiler is a lot more powerful, we have to do a lot less of these tricks, which is great. We, um, we don't have to help the Scala compiler, the Scala free compiler, because the Scala free compiler is a lot smarter than the two one. Um, but also I want to point out, these screenshots are taken from the Scala REPL and look how much nicer the Scala free REPL looks. It's just colors, but the colors do make a difference when you're reading the line and help you parse uh, the line correctly. It's the small thing that makes us really happy. 
So number five, the uh, Scala free uh, compiler has a much improved type inference, which makes our life a lot easier. And let's move on to number four. Number four is something that is called uh, procedure syntax, which is something that uh, the Scala 2 compiler um, offers. And um, you see it on the screen. This is a simple example where you have no equal between the parameters and the beginning of the body of your function. And what the Scala compiler assumes is that you mean that your function has written type unit. So when you fit this function to the Scala to compiler, um, it considers it as valid. It puts some warning um, suggesting that you might want to um, explicitly say that the return type is unit by uh, completely um, typing it out. Um, but you know, you still accept it as valid. And the problem with this is again, you might be thinking that this function returns a string, but actually no, it does not return a string, it returns a unit. And um, you might not see these warnings, right? People ignore warnings all the time. You might not have the fatal warnings flag enabled because maybe you're new to the language and you don't know what that is. Um, and you can see how by adding just an equal to your function, your function is now completely different. Without the equal, it's a function that returns a unit. And with the equal, just one character, it returns a string. It's a completely different story. So this is really dangerous. Now with Scala 3, all of that is gone. The procedure syntax is gone, uh, which is a good thing, right? Because we don't want to make mistakes simply because we didn't want to type an equal. Um, so if your code heavily starts to code, heavily relies on procedure syntax, no worries, there is a Scala fix to write that can um, write them all for you. Um, and uh, so if you are using Scala 3, you cannot, use, you cannot use the procedure syntax anymore. But what you have to do is that you have to put an equal. And then when you put the equal, life is beautiful again, your function returns a, a string. And we are going to see this example uh, again in the next um, the next feature that we are going to discuss. So um, feature number four is procedure say, uh, syntax. Uh, let's move on to number three. Number three is improved error messages. And the Scala team has done a monumental effort to try and make the Scala language more friendly, easier to use. Um, and you can really see how these evolved in time. So the next example that we are going to see is from a talk, um, that a really great talk from Fiona, uh, where in um, a few years ago, 2017, I believe, um, she discussed how um, when she was learning Scala, the Scala compiler at times was um, particularly funny with uh, really unclear messages. Uh, but let's see uh, one of her examples. They are kind of related to the procedure syntax that we just saw. So let's assume that we have this kind of function, right? We have the echo function that we uh, we saw before. Um, I've put the uh, signature just to make clear what is going on. Um, so we have the function echo, and then we have another function that is called echo twice, uh, that takes a string called the echo function, and then um, uses pattern matching uh, looking for a string. And this is clearly an error, right? You are calling a function that returns a unit, and then with that unit value, you are trying to pattern match expecting a string. And that um, is a genuine error, particularly if people use procedure syntax. So what happens if you type this um, into the Scala2 repo, or you just fit it to the Scala2 compiler? Well, the Scala2 compiler is, um, is erroring, which is good, but it's not really useful. It's saying scrutiny is incompatible with pattern type found string required unit. 
And you can see how this is really cryptic. I'm not even sure what a scrutiny is, right? And this is really frightening to somebody that just uh, is trying to learn a scholar. Um, but let's see how uh, this exact error has been improved in uh, Scala 3. And if you type this in Scala 3, the error that you get is very different. Cannot test is value of type unit is a reference of class string, which is exactly what is going on. You are trying to pattern match um, a value of type unit and get a string out of it, which is something that you cannot do. So this is really, really important, right? Because we are making um, the language um, a lot more approachable, a lot more easier to use by improving the error messages that it can produce, which is a great thing. So number three is improved error messages. Number two is trick to quality. It's something that we have been waiting um, for, uh, for a while now. Uh, and it's finally here. So imagine you have a uh, Disney put of code, you have a list that contains two elements, Scala and free. And then you do head option, which is the function that returns um, probably the first element of the list. And you um, just uh, expect to find um, the, the string Scala, right? This, this makes perfect sense, right? You would expect this to be um, true because um, the, the text Scala, the string Scala is indeed the first um, element uh, of the list. But if we put this to the Scala compiler, the two, um, the one from Scala 2, well, actually, um, it doesn't return true, it returns false which is a little bit weird. But then if you read the warning, then uh, you realize that you are comparing an option of a string with a string. And of course, these two things are not the same type. How can they be equal? Um, so again, this in Scala 2 is a warning and people ignore the warnings all the time. And this can cause all sorts of bugs. This expression will never, never return true no matter what. So it's, again, it's, it's, it's a possible source of bug. But what happens in Scala 3? Well, in Scala 3, this is no longer valid, right? If you try to do something like that, the compiler just stops you. Values of types, option of string and string cannot be compared with equal, equal, or not equal, which is great, right? Because it's probably not what you want to do. So the Scala 3 compiler now helps us not making stupid mistakes which is, is great, right? Uh, the language now is protecting us, uh, which is super cool. So um, finally, we have strict equality in Scala 3. But now let's move on to um, number one, the number one feature that is not an enum that I absolutely love about Scala 3. And that is Scala 3 is compatible with Scala 213. So um, as I mentioned before, I wrote a book and I had to migrate the entire book to Scala 3 and I was a little bit concerned about it. But actually it was extremely easy to do. Uh, it took me only uh, three months um, and um, all I had to do was to bump up my Scala version, um, changing the uh, the, the dependency, the number of my dependencies. And um, yeah, the, that pretty much was it. So um, this is true in general of most of applications. Migrating to Scala 3 is gonna be extremely easy. It's almost as easy as migrating to a different Scala version. Um, and, uh, but of course there is a little caveat uh, and the caveat is that uh, your application needs to be on a fairly recent um, Scala 2 version. So uh, if you are on Scala 2.13, uh, you have backward and forward compatibility, um, which uh, is great um, because it means that basically all you have to do is to change a number. And the other caveat is that um, your code um, 
doesn't need to uh, rely on macros. So if your um, code uh, uses macros, then the migration path is a little bit more trickier. But the Stella Center has done a really, really, really great job and has compiled, um, uh, has created um, uh, the Stella Free Migration Guide, uh, which I put you the link on the slide. It's a really, really um, cool, uh, cool guide on how to uh, migrate all your projects to Scala. But the thing to keep in mind is that you can use artifacts. Uh, from Scala to 13, from Scala 3, and vice versa. So, um, and I absolutely love uh, this about Scala in general, right? Uh, yes, it offers us more uh, functionalities. Yes, it is a better language, but still, the Scala Center went through a lot of um, a lot of uh, care to make sure that this migration was as smooth as possible. Um, so. Um, that's, uh, that's definitely my number one. Uh, Scala 3 is definitely a better language, uh, but at the end of the day, it's still Scala. So uh, thank you very much for listening. Um, again, my name is Daniela, and if you're interested, check out my book, Programming with Scala. But um, now it's time for my question uh, to uh, the Scala Center and uh, Martin Odersky. And my question is where people uh, can learn about Scala Free, what kind of resources, what kind of um, uh, courses do we have out there uh, that can help us learn more about this uh, new, more powerful Scala language? Thanks. <laughs>